I heard somebody the other day on something I was watching quote Grace Slick from Don't You Want Somebody to Love. Man, there's a line in that song, you better find somebody to love. Man, that's a strong line there. You better. But it says, when the truth is found to be lies and all the joy within you dies. I told Tommy Friday night, I think, I told Susie last week, sometimes knowing what's going on ain't as fun as not knowing what's going on, you know? And when you find out the depth of the lies that what the deceiver's been doing to the people of the earth, you know, for the past thousands of years, it really just about knocked the joy out of you. But then when you see the overall plan, how God's going to win this thing and turn it all around, and we're going to be the recipient of the winning of this battle. Isn't that good news? Man, I'm, I am more than ready. And God says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. And we're going to look at that scripture in just a minute. Father, in Jesus' name, give me what we need, Lord, this day. I ask for daily bread. Father, what we need for this time that we're in now. Lord, we need a now word for today. Thank you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you. And I believe you will push, pull, shove, do whatever it takes for us to wind up where you want us to be. Thank you, Lord. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But I was thinking about recently... Our thoughts are mostly not our thoughts. They are thoughts we took from other people. And unless their thoughts line up with God's thoughts, it's not going to be a thought that can do you much good. I was listening this morning early. Um, John Levi does a drop early on Sunday mornings. Usually he's doing it every Sunday and he's dropping it off every other Sunday, I think. But if you want to learn how to critically think, watch this morning just John Levi, L-E-V-I, J-O-N, John L-E-V-I, and listen to it. He, it was just astounding me as how he was showing us how we think. And, and he, he was doing a presentation of a lesson he was given about some things in the world in history. And he was showing that how to, how to think things out, not just take things the way they are, but put it up against something else and then figure it out for yourself. Remember last week I told you the, the most important part about discernment is to realize discernment is you deciding for yourself. Not just taking what somebody else says. Jesus told us to ask, seek, and knock. Inquire. James says, be swift to hear, slow to speak. I'm giving, right now, I'm giving you my thoughts. And I believe the thoughts that I'm conveying with you now, the seeds that I'm sowing, I believe are from the throne. I believe they're from God and the things I've learned over the years that have worked in our life and continue to work. And I got every one of them from, from the Bible. I'm going to look at Isaiah 55 a little bit. I'm, somehow I've been winding up in Isaiah a lot lately. Isaiah was a prophet, mighty prophet, Old Testament, probably about 700, 750 years before the birth of Jesus. And he had a lot of prophecy describing to a T the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And you know, I didn't get here last week. There is a thing in Isaiah, I think, where it talks about Jesus not having anything to be desired. He was not some good-looking, blonde, blue-eyed guy. In fact, he didn't have blue eyes. He didn't have blonde hair. But he is not like the guy that, hang, that was hanging over my mama's bed all those years that I saw, and I thought that was him. It looked like one of the Doobie Brothers, but, uh, but the good-looking Doobie Brother. Uh, uh, it, there's so much that you can learn about Jesus by looking at the prophet, because he fulfilled the prophecy. So the prophecy would be accurate, you know, the things that he said about him. Seek ye the Lord, verse 6 of Isaiah 55, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call you upon him while he is near. I love that thought. We have the thought that God is hard to locate and hard to find. It's almost the same thing that Paul said when he was preaching at Athens at Areopagus, when he said, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, while he's near. He's not, though he be not far from any of you. And he's not. He's a whosoever heart cry away, always. Let the wicked Forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. One of the main thoughts the unrighteous man has to get rid of is that his righteousness is in God and he's okay with God. You begin to believe that you're unrighteous. The New Testament, that word should have been translated justice. It means that God is going to be mad at you. Righteousness means you're in right standing with the Father. Everything's okay between you and God. Say that. Say everything between me and God is okay. 
remain there. It's so easy. I mean, all you have to do is just slip up, have some bad thoughts, and you'll think, well, I know that has displeased me. I know. No. He, he's, got, he's got built-in mechanism in him for this, for that, and it's called grace. Amen. You know, I'm telling you, you can't out the grace of God. And I've tried it, bless God. <laughs> but you really can't. Yeah, I don't mean go out and do it. Paul said, God forbid. That's not what we're saying, but that's the way people think. But the truth is, when you know everything's okay between you and God, those sin things, they just sort of fall away. You don't have to struggle with them. They, you turn around and stuff you used to be hung up in, where'd it go? I hadn't thought about that in three or four days. That's a wonderful time. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's above and beyond, isn't it? For my thoughts, here's God speaking first person, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now he's going to tell how his thoughts or his word or his seeds work. As rain comes down and snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God's thoughts will cause the most important part of a crop is the seed for the next crop. And he will give seed to the sower. And if you think you don't have anything, you don't have anything to sow, if you have anything in your hand, that's enough. If it's not enough to meet your need, it's most likely going to be your seed. And I'm not just talking money-wise. It works in every area of your life while the earth remaineth, seed, time, and harvest. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. How does it return to him? Us. We return it to him when we speak forth the things that he has told us, when we confess and profess our stance in the kingdom. And what we know, we know that, both that healing is ours. We know that prosperity is ours. We know that joy is ours. Yeah. Yeah. We return it to him. It said, it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper the thing whereto I sent it. Well, I'm one of the things whereto he sent it, and I return it to him constantly, and I'm always seeing bread, I'm always seeing fruit, and I'm always seeing more seed to sow. And that's, where we, that's what we need right now. We need that more than ever, I believe. What God says, the thoughts that he wants to replace our thought. It's hard to replace a new thought when you've got another thought filling that hole. I always liken that to you can't plant a seed where a tree is. You know, you're not going to work. I mean, you put it right next to it, it doesn't matter. That tree's going to crowd it out. You have to get that seed out, that, that, that tree out in order to then put the seed in. Same where it is. I, I told you last week, I think we were... We were sort of plowing up the field. And we've been doing a lot of that lately, trying to get our thoughts, to get away from thoughts we just picked up along the way, whatever group you were with, whatever family you grew up in, and there's nothing wrong with your groups or your family. But a lot of times the things that we just learned by existing look very different than the thoughts that God has revealed to us in the Bible, and especially through Jesus. Especially through Jesus. Boy, we've got Jesus being a mean man, and he's a sweet man. He's a good dude. Amen. Amen. Your thoughts really do not become your thoughts, though, until you learn to decide for yourself, not taking someone else's thoughts. Um, Isaiah 60 is another place in Isaiah that I've been for probably close to 40 years. I've always arise and shine for thy light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. <clears throat> I have always believed that I was living in the time of that scripture. I've always believed that I was going to see that come to pass, and I believe that time is now. It's always meant, if you've been with me very long, you've heard me, I quote it, it just gets thrown out at, at random because it's always in my mind, and I believe it is the church's purpose to rise and shine and be a light to attract those that need what we have found out about God. But if you had not found out anything about God, we ain't got nothing like to offer except what we can do. We can't, what can we do? Make a mess, you know, prolong the, the, the misery people are in. 
That's about what God's ways will cause us to be winners in everything that we put our hands to. I believe it. I mean, I'm on the good side of Deuteronomy 28. Those blessings are mine every day, have been for 40 years, and they will be for eternity, I imagine. Um, You're either on one side of this or the other. I'm going to read it real quickly. Arise, shine, verse 1, Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is coming, the glory of the Lord. The full manifestation of the presence of the Lord is risen upon you, upon thee. For behold... You know, I've read this and quoted it as saying darkness. I think a minute ago I said darkness. It's the darkness. You know? Uh, there wasn't but one Elvis. It was the Elvis. There wasn't one Jesus. The Jesus. This is talking about the darkness. It's like, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It's talking about that, the root. The darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. I think the Amplified says dense darkness. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Okay, darkness, would you agree with me that we're living in a time like never before where the, there's more darkness in the world than we've ever seen? My dear God, look what they're trying to do to our grade schoolers. Look what's going on. Look at the insanity of what's going on where, in the realm where we live right now. I mean, gasoline is going to five and six and seven and eight dollars a gallon because we don't want to environmentally hurt anything in our land, but we get it from people that don't give two hoots about the environment from other countries. I didn't take the top off of it, did I? Does that make any sense? I mean, we need to open that pipeline back up and drop the price. Things are making no sense. This is where we're living right now. I, I, I think that the enemy is, is he's, checkout time was 11 o'clock and it's like 12.30 and he ain't wanting to leave but he's wanting to tear the room up before he gets kicked out. I think that's where, I think he's like Joe Walsh in the old days at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. I've never seen such blindness in people as I'm seeing right now. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee. And here's the main verse that concerns us. And the Gentiles, that word in Hebrew is goy. And it literally means everybody but them. In, In our situation, it means everybody but us. Okay, it means the nations. Usually when you see Gentiles in the New Testament, the word is ethnos. It means ethnicity or ethnic groups, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. In other words, you should be able to be a positive, guiding, leading influence in everyone's path that crosses yours or you cross theirs. You should, they, it doesn't matter what their station in life is, they should see something in you that they need. Are y'all cold? No, no, no. I am. Um, it's a little chilly in here. It's ch- it could be chilly tonight, but hot tamale, is that really? You know? <laughs> Today, I um, want you to leave here believing in the light that is in you, believing in the life that is in you. John chapter 1 says, in him Jesus was life, and that life is the light of men, light and life. Same thing, same thought. You know right now, you can, on the way home, if you're stopping to get gas or stopping to get a loaf of bread or whatever you're doing, you, whatever store you go in, you have the opportunity to, to dictate the atmosphere of wherever you are. You can go in there and light the place up. You know you can. We do it. And you can also see one person show up that can bring a sour puss mood to everybody. Amen. I think you know some of them, don't you? <laughs> we see that at a small level. We, we all demonstrate that. That's something I try to do. I, and I realize when I'm doing it. I also realize when I'm not doing it. I realize if we go to the store and I'm in a lousy mood and I'm ready to jump on anybody that looks at me wrong. But I on purpose try to remember. That's the hard part. Remembering to be a positive, joyful influence on people. And when you do that, guess what? 
you turn around, you, you, you see smiles everywhere you go. You see people helping each other. We are to be the standard by which the world seeks. The world is in trouble, and they're going to be in deep trouble. The darkness is deep as it gets. We're about in the midst of it, and it's going to be very bad, but they need the body of Christ. They need the light and the life that we have. That that is sustaining us, they need. Amen. Uh, there's not two kinds of God-like, God-life and God-light. It's His light. It's like, it's like the Holy Spirit. For some reason, we know that the Holy Spirit dwells in us, but we sort of think of it as Him being a sub-God. No, he is, he is equal with God. He is God. And He resides in you. And that light and that life is equal to the light and the life of God. Do you understand that? You have to know this about yourself in order to do the assignment that God's going to give each and every one of you individually. Maybe, maybe you already have. Romans 8, chapter 11 says, The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Not shows up every once in a while when you fasted and you've got all the sin lined up in your mind, everything's just, no. It says the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You have the same power that Jesus had. Now, that's a hard thing to say. That, 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 that's heretic hunter bringer out of the woodworkers. <laughs> Most folks say, how dare you be saying that you have the same power as Jesus? There's not but one dunamis. There's not but one power. He, he told the disciples and he told all the people that were following him to go tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. That word power is dunamis, where we get the word dynamite or dynamo. Go and wait there until you be endued, talking about the beginning, the birth of the New Testament church with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which we talked about last week, a week before last. In um, Acts chapter 2, he's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. And it is the very power of God. And I point this out, and I'm going to show you another scripture today. Whenever Jesus would, would be an officiator over a, a healing, is that what you say? When somebody comes to him and needs it, they get it. And Jesus says, it was you that did it. He, he did say that. I'm going to show you. He said that. And that's not, we need Jesus more than anything. But this is how you get Jesus. You realize his existence in you, and you realize the, the power, the authority that you have as a believer. You have authority. That word authority means you've been authorized to operate as a proxy of Jesus. We're his body. We are figurative representative. When Jesus said, when, when Paul says we are ambassadors for Christ, an ambassador stands in place for the president when the president is on the other side of the ocean. But everything he says carries the same word. Wait, that's what the president says. You understand that? That's the way it is with his church, but we have not been taught that. We don't believe it. We think of ourselves as just lowly worms. No, we are created in the image and likeness of God. We are filled with the Spirit of God, and God wants to lead you every day into your destiny, which is going to be changing life. Everywhere you look behind you, you should see lives that were changed in a positive fashion because you walk that way. That's what we're to do. I'm cold, y'all. Somebody turn the air conditioner up. Please. Yeah, don't jump all at once now. Ah, yeah. Philippians 2. I'm, as long as I'm getting in trouble, why don't I jump into it with both feet? Philippians 2, Paul says in verse 5, let this mind be in you. You know you have a mind. Your mind is not your brain. Your brain is the tool that, it, that your mind uses. Um, the mind is part of your soulish realm. You are a spirit, you have a soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Those things that the doctor can cut you open and look all day long, he ain't going to find none of those. He ain't going to find your mind, he ain't going to find your will, he's not going to find your emotions. But they are part of our soulish realm. And he says, let this mind be in you. Now, also Paul says we have the mind of Christ, right? 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, that'll get you thrown out of most denominations if you preach that. And I'm sure I'm getting folks cussing and throwing stuff at the TV right now. If they're watching on TV, or they smash their iPhone on the floor and break the screen. Being in the form of God, what, how did God create us? In His likeness? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. We are the temple of God. We're a little piece of God, but with the full power of God. We're not sovereign God, but we are His children like Him. And He thought that we needed to be here at the time this thing is winding down and starting up, whatever's going on, he thought that we were the group that needed to be here right now. Yes. That's something else Paul said in Athens. I said, he said, he has determined when you're going to be and where you're going to be. You're here at the right, say, I'm here at the right time. You were born for this moment, y'all. But it says, he made of himself no reputation, and he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to death of the cross. Now, that's where we're going to have a little problem. We all say, would you die for Jesus? Absolutely, I'd die for Jesus. When it comes down to it, I don't know, you know. When the man starts coming with his tools to pluck your eyebrows out and stuff. I, I, I like to think what I would do. I would lay down my life. I believe I, I would say I would. I said, there's so many things that we should be rising up to, but it's not even talked about in church. We have to be secure in our relationship with God. We have to be assured and secure in the truth that we have a God-given power in these humans' hands where if we lay hands on the sick, we should expect recovery to follow. That's Mark chapter 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Susie and I, that has been our physician mainly for the last 40 40 years, over 40 years. Right now we've got one of, my, one of our puppies is going through something. And either I have had my hand on her all night long or either Susie had. We took, take turns. Why? That's the way we do it with each other. If we're going through something. I lay my hands on her and leave it there all night. She'll do the same with me. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. What happened? I don't know. None of my bees wax. But something must flow through me too. Somebody of that, you know. It's what has worked for us Forever. We were thinking the other day, Missy was a German shepherd. Somebody dropped off with us out at the first moved to the river out the country years ago. She never had a rabies shot. I'd already read a bunch of stuff about that. Now, all four of my dogs now are up to date, so don't go call animal control on me. But we never, we took her to the vet one time to have her spayed. She lived, this is a German shepherd, she lived to be, we, we're not exactly sure, it's like 18 or 19 years. That's extraordinary for a German shepherd. They live about 12 or 13. She was an unbelievable smart dog. But we, did, we treated her just like we did the children. We, we grew up, uh, Susie and I have spent more money on the dogs we have now at the vet than we did our four children raising them. <laughs> How many times you go to Dr. Josh? When did you go to the doctor once? Emergency room. Oh, that's right. When you do, that's where you cut your head. That's right. When, forgot about that. Then we got burned. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was it. And it, did it work? Were we ever sick? We just, we, and we knew that recovery is going, if, even if you get you down, recovery is going to, I didn't mean to talk about that, but somebody might need to hear that this morning. The most common way people give up their power is they don't believe they have any. It's easy for us to be powerless when we don't believe we have power. It manifests in those that believe it's going to manifest. 
It's another one of those things that you believe and it comes to pass. Amen. Mark chapter 10 verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should, hey, shut up, man, you're embarrassing us. But he cried out a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. He stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And they called the blind man saying, I knew he's going to do this. Come on, be of good comfort. He wants you to, wants to see you. And this is an important thing here. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That's pretty cool. He didn't say, this guy was blind from birth, wasn't he? That I may receive sight, or you may Give me sight. But he wanted his sight. That I call it those things that be not, either he, either he realized it or not. That I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, your faith. Bartimaeus, listen to me. Go your way, your faith is fixing this stuff. And immediately he received his, fight, his sight and followed Jesus in the way. That's strong. Same thing he said to the lady that had the issue of blood for 12 years. Yes. Thy faith has saved thee. That word, when it says here, um, thy faith has made thee whole, <clears throat> that's the Greek word sozo, and it means saved. Mm -hmm. Salvation. All of that is, you can, you can get your concordance, get a strong, I'm familiar with that, get any concordance and look up salvation, look up saved. And you're not going to find anything in the definition that says it's a ticket to heaven. It ain't there. It has to do with needs that we have now on this side of heaven. You're going to heaven. Don't worry about that. God doesn't lose. Amen. You're going to be okay. But salvation is a package of healing, preservation, protection. Protection and preservation. This crazy guy right here, I should have been killed a million times before I finally cried out, God, if you're real, show up. There was preservation going on. I don't understand it, and I don't understand why some do and some. I don't get none of that. One day we will know, but I know God doesn't do things in a... a, 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 a unequal fashion. He is not a respecter of persons. We told that several times in the Bible. He's going to do for one, he'll do for all. And his love is not based on what we do or who we are or anything like that. It's based on him. He is love. He is love. You want to know what love is? It's him. There's nothing you can do to make him love you any more and nothing you can do to make him love you any less. Always, they've got to have that confidence. Casting away his garment, rose, and he came to Jesus. Why, why, why did he bring that up that he took his coat off? I have heard this preached several times in, in my life, and I've never done research on it, so I'm just supposing it's true. And actually, I like knowing that it is true in me. I believe it is true, and I don't want to find out that it ain't true. Honey, I do things like that with Scripture all the time. You know, if, if I need help in Scripture and I find a Scripture don't suit me, I'll look somewhere else. <laughs> you pick and choose? Yeah, the promise is a yea and amen. The exceeding abundantly above is what he wants to do. Isn't that amazing? Uh, what I've heard is that in order to, at that time in history there in Jerusalem, is that where this was? Is that where he said it was? No, it's in Jericho. Um, you had to, it was like your license to beg. It's like you had been inspected either by the priest or by the governing agency, the, the Romans. And they had said, okay, this guy's legitimately blind. You know, it's either a patch that put on his coat or it's a coat that would, from afar off, you'd know that this is a guy that has been approved by the higher ups. He can beg, right? You got that? And so when he threw it off, Immediately, somebody don't, that thing's worth money. I mean, that's like losing somebody's welfare card or something. You know, somebody pick that thing up and go run to the machine. 
<clears throat> and that's, that's, he flung it off and then went to Jesus. What, what in the world is that? There's coming a time, some of you have already faced it, some of you are facing it right now, or you're about to, where you're going to be backed in a corner and you're going to have to turn loose of your security system. You're going to have to turn. When, <clears throat> when we started this church, I moved so fast before I could talk myself out of it that by the time I had paid the deposit on the first month's rent, it was too late for me to back out. I had already done it. That's the way I've done it. I, I remember the name of your ministry. It was a leap of faith ministry, wasn't it? That way you just, you got to do it. You jump. You go. If, 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 if I sink, it's God's fault because I'm hanging on to him. I, I know what his, what his word says. I know I've got it on the inside of me. I believe it, and I believe I receive when I pray. Therefore, God, you're going to look after me. That's why people are afraid to tithe or to, or to make offering to church. They're afraid they're going to give away their money instead of seeing it as a time of sowing seed. That, I, I remember when it happened with us. But gosh, we did, everything just changed so fast in our life. And it became our main source became what we gave away. It's still like that today. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just, I'm just, it's God's method for supplying the needs to his people. Yes. Given it shall be given. Don't given it won't be given. It's just the way it is. Well, I don't have anything. I know you don't. It's because you won't give. Well, if I give, I really won't have anything. Hide and watch. Prove me in this, Malachi says. See if I don't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to contain. And then you'll die. Well, I, I tried it and it didn't work. Well, how come it didn't work? Because as soon as you tried it, you said, this stuff ain't working. And you're getting what you say. That's the way the whole thing works. The whole Mary goes round like that. You keep, and you're going to you got to keep it going. This is a great way to live, y'all. It's the only way to live. And it's never too late to jump on board. It's never too late to hook yourself up to God's precious principle. Bartimaeus had to completely reject his thoughts. At the same old, same old, seeing himself every day. Well, I'm thinking that Jesus, I've heard about him. I ain't never seen him do anything. I'm blind, but I've heard everything that he's done. I've heard the stories. And if he ever passes my way, this jacket's off of me, and I'm going to get my healing. That's all there is to it. He didn't hang on to it. He didn't hang on to it and then let Jesus fix the problem, actually, Bartimaeus did, which I'll talk about in a minute. But he got rid of it before he went to Jesus. That's what you got to do. I mean, when Peter walked on the water, he didn't have a life jacket on. But what happened? When he began to look at the circumstances, look at the weather, look at the storm, he began to sink. But guess what happens when you mess up with Jesus? Jesus grabs you and pulls you up. Come on, we're going to do it again. Do it again. Forty years, children of Israel went around to say, it was an 11-day journey. Forty years, they ain't got there yet. Something wrong. What was it? They didn't believe. They murmured and complained. They finally, God says, what you said in my ears, I'm going to do to you. Actually, it wasn't him doing it. It was them doing it to themselves. That's the Old Testament concept. That's the, the Old Testament version of Mark 11, 23. You're going to have what you say. Y'all got it? Are y'all getting anything out of this? I am. Bartimaeus, now here's a twist in the story. Bartimaeus believed that Jesus was going to restore his sight. But Jesus said it was his faith that did it. But I'm going to tell you something. I bet for the rest of Bartimaeus' life, he said Jesus did it. What if we adjusted our thinking? And not, I'm not talking about and go tell anybody that. My God. Well, pastor says, I, I'm, I'm Jesus here. I'm, come, you got a problem? Come here. I'm Jesus. No. 
This is something you've got to know on the inside of you and you don't talk about. It's something, it's the way you respond to issues and the way you, you face your problems and the way that you see God come through. That it's always going to happen this way. You're, 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 it, when you've got a problem, well, we're going through some things right now, and you have to keep that fear. If the fear comes in, when fear comes in, you will try to take care of the problem yourself. As long as you can fear not and trust God, then I believe it's the power that flows through you that he endued us with. That word endued is so cool. When he said, I'm, go to Terry in Jerusalem, and you shall be endued with power. It means sinking in like in a garment. Who not that a good, it's like putting on a comfortable coat or something, you know. Just covered with it. I love that thought. And when we realize that, that that is us, it's not a real coat, it's not a real garment, but it, it's the Holy Spirit has given me all the tools I need to succeed at whatever I attempt and to help others who need help. They're gonna, you, we're going to be seeing a lot of people, folks, that need a lot of help in the days that we're about to approach. Our built-in system of believing the way God wired us is working right now as you sit here and it's either working for you or it's working again you. It doesn't, it's, it's not ever static. It's always going in one direction or the other. When Jesus went to his own hometown to teach, now nah, he should have welcomed him home, man. He went, local boy makes good, you know. Well, the people, the Bible says they were offended and because all he, he was a carpenter. He was a carpenter's son, and he was a carpenter. That's all he was. That's all he will ever be. Who is this guy? Let me see what this is. It's in Mark 6. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Now, did y'all know Jesus had that many brothers and sisters? You never hear about that, do you? That's what it says here in Mark chapter 6. And Simon and our ninety sisters with us, and they were offended at him. Once you get, get a hold of that, it says they were offended at him. All right, that's, 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 it's like people, you know, how many people that I grew up with do you see in this church? And even when the church was full over there on Stewart, how many people that I hung out with did you see in that church? Zero. Jesus says the prophet is not without honor except in his own home or with his own people. Yeah. That is, I'm just always going to be my mama's little boy. You know, not, not a preacher. It's the, way, it's the way we all looked at. It's the way we think about other people always. And when he went there, it says they were offended. Now, that offended don't mean they were insulted. If you look the word offend up, it means it's the word where we get the word scandal. It's scandalon, and it's a trap. They're trapped. That's what he's saying. They were trapped. They had trapped themselves by not putting their belief toward what he was teaching them. The thoughts that he was giving them to replace their thoughts, the higher thoughts that Jesus was preaching, they were not taking them. In fact, they were excusing them out of their life by saying, that's just Jesus, that little boy. I remember when he used to bring my paper when he was a paper boy. Good gracious, always throwing the paper into bushes and everything. And that's the way we are, you know. That's why you have to listen with spiritual ears and see with spiritual eyes. But they were offended. They were trapped. The word scandal is a operation of the enemy, the God of this world with the little G. My daddy used to refer to people as a scandal. Did y'all ever hear, hear that? He was saying scandal, but he said scandal. Did y'all ever hear that growing up? He'd say, oh, he was a, he's a scandal. And it would be somebody that makes his living by being a shyster or somebody that just sort of tricks their way through life and uses people. A scandal, that's, that's that word there, it's a trap. That, a scandal is somebody that's in a scandal. And they're, they're trapped in that always. Nobody in their right mind puts themselves in those situations. But look what happened here. An expert, it boils down to an expert is somebody from out of town. Always. That's why I moved to Leesburg. <laughs> when we had the 
losing my religion thing, I thought, okay, they can't hear what I'm saying. So I got some guy came down from Detroit, and I had people from all over the country there, and it didn't work. But that's what an expert is. It's somebody from out of town, somebody you don't know. It's what, it's what they do on the news when they're lying to you, making you believe the lies. They'll tell the story, then they'll cut to the expert, the expert at, at, at Harvard and all, all them places that used to be good, you know. And they'll tell their story about it. Where did they come from? How did they get it? Well, what have they done? They're using a Bible principle. Let every word be established. Out of the mouth of two witnesses, let every word be established. You hear something a couple of times, you hear different people saying it, you begin to believe it. That's why I, I, I Julie, please listen to these messages over and over as you hear. Faith comes by hearing, not having heard. And it, it's something you have to stay on top of. Y'all ain't playing with me today, hey. I'm telling you, life will bring you, and right now, everywhere, life is bringing people to a place where you, like Bartimaeus, have to make a decision and throw off, in a lot of cases, that that you have been hanging on to is not going to be there anymore for you to use. A lot of things are changing. A lot of things are about to change, and I'm not they say, and I'm just telling you what I know is about to happen, and I know the solution. The solution is so easy. I've been preaching it for 27 years now. It's, it's not difficult. The time of us excusing ourselves from commitment to complete trust in God is over. We're about in a place where we're going to be forced into that commitment to completely trust God with our lives and with everything. It's why he endued us with power. And like I said, he believes that you are capable of succeeding in this. Otherwise, you would not be here. And I don't mean just here in the realm, but I'm talking here in this room or here sitting on your couch watching on your phone or out in your hammock watching on your iPad or in your car on purpose. God is meticulous in these kind of things. He gets instructions to the people that he wants to get them to. And the way he began to prove them in our lives, just immediately, immediately they begin to just come to pass in our lives. If you believe in the life that is in you and you believe in the light that is in you, then you're ready to rise and shine. The light has come. The glory of the Lord, the full manifestation of the presence of God. Think about a rose when it's in its glory. It's when it's as pretty as it's ever going to get. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And it's going to attract people somehow at the store. It's, it's, it, you're going to wind up with, with like what Susie and I have wound up with, which is a good thing. That is people that can't help themselves or won't help themselves or trying to learn how to help themselves, but they need help in the meantime. And they come to us and they become our little flock almost. You won't ever see them here. But think about if everybody in the body of Christ took the projects that God sends to them. Think about it. I can't get that thought out of my mind, y'all. I know it's something new, and it's not the way the church thinks. The church thinks of, of walls busting with folks coming in, and that's it. No, this is a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, and God's the one he wants to use. That's right, that's right. You in the lives of others, arise, shine. You've either got what they need. Here's, here's the cool thing about this. You've either got what they need, and as you're doing that, you'll find out there's some things that they have that you need. We have learned more from the people that we minister to than we have given to them. And a lot of them, we don't even attempt to try to lead them into a different style of life because they're not capable of changing. I, 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 God, I know, can do anything. And if we ever see a side there, that's we'll begin doing it. Um, but that some people just can't hear and are not going to hear. They've, they've got mental capacity problems and things like that. But think about it, we all need each other is what it comes down to. When you've done it to the least of these, my brother, and you have done it unto me. That's the key to us being successful right now is the key. It's like God is always going to supply your needs just like he did Abraham. He blessed him that he would be a blessing. God wants to bless you so that you can in turn bless others. If you're blessed, you will have enough to meet your needs and then some over. 
That's what he wants to do. And we're living in a time where we're going to learn third world experiences pretty quick here in these United States. I hate to say that, but scarcity is going to be, what is the word I'm looking for? Abundant. It's going to be an abundance of scarcity. That's genius, honey. There, there is. We already see it a little bit. They're easing us into it. We, but listen, honey, God has got this thing. The good guys are going to win. But we've got a lot of waking up to do right now. I'm telling you, all the lies are being exposed, and God's people are going to rise and shine. We are going to be the light that's going to, and it's going to be quick. We're going to lead people. We're going to lead people out of their misery and into the full presence and the manifestation of the glory of God in their life so they can in turn turn around and help others. Did y'all get anything out of this today? God bless y'all. Uh, believe in it. Believe in the light that is in you. Look at all the scriptures that are in the Bible that God says about how you are ready. You are able. You are more than a conqueror. The spirit that, that lifted you, Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You have been endued with power from on high. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's on and on and on. Look at Psalm 91 and see yourself in the middle of that thing. While everything's going crazy in the world, you're like a spectator, it says, observing what's going on. And, and there are wicked folks. Listen to me. There are wicked people out there, but we're not the ones that are to divide the goat from the sheep. God's going to do that. We are to love all as if they're all sheep. God, there are some out there that ain't got the same DNA as we got. They're the ones Jesus referred to as your, of your father, the devil. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Lord, I love you so much. Thank you for your seed that is growing and bringing forth fruit in all of our hearts, Lord. Lord, this day we, we commit all over again to, to hear from you and immediately give a decision towards your thoughts over our thoughts in everything you say to us, Lord. Thank you for leading and guiding us. I love you, Lord. Father, thank you. I ask that you touch Addison and comfort Christy, Lord, this morning, and all the people, everybody in Lisa's family that are hurting, Lord, and, and Conrad and Cindy, everybody, Father, and the ones I've named and the ones I haven't named. We ask for your comfort, your strength, and your wisdom in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen.